Hey, what's good guys? It's Zach. Hope you all are doing well. Welcome to the fourth episode of The Daily Driver. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the ZTE Blade Z Max. Now, pretty much everything I say about this phone can be tied in with its price tag. You can grab it for about $100, which is incredible when you think about it, what with a number of flagship phones climbing that price ladder, getting up there to about a thousand bucks. So with the Blade Z Max, the theme here and the word that I use to describe my time with it is surprising. Taking a look at the hardware, it does have a plastic build, but it doesn't feel cheap. It feels solid. The side rails have a nice coating, making the phone comfortable to hold. It's quite thin, in fact. And the back has this unique but nice looking honeycomb textured pattern. It adds a decent amount of grip, and again, I think it looks pretty cool. On the right side, you'll find the volume buttons and the power button, which is textured. I've always liked that. The left side houses the SIM card tray, which is also home to a micro SD card slot, which you don't see too often nowadays. And on the bottom, you'll find the USB Type-C charging port alongside the beloved headphone jack. ZTE knows what's up. On the back, it's got a dual camera setup. It's pretty cool seeing that on a budget phone. Below that, you'll find the fingerprint reader. You guys know how much I love this placement. I think it's perfect. And all the way at the bottom, you'll find the rear facing speaker. Now flipping the phone around and you'll be greeted by this massive six inch 1080p IPS LCD display. I have to say, a lot of companies, ZTE included, are getting a lot better at making huge 1080p screens actually look good. This is one of those things I was surprised with. It's clean, it's sharp, colorful, and it pushes out a decent amount of brightness. Overall, it is great for media consumption, especially watching movies and TV shows. Now, in the bottom bezel, you'll find your usual Android navigation keys in the form of touch capacitive buttons. And if you wanted to, you could flip the orientation of them, which is nice. In terms of software, the Z Max is running Android 7.1.1 out of the box, which is great to see. It's a pretty clean version of Android 2. It does have some add-ons from Metro PCS, but other than that, it is very clean. So now, finally, what is it like to use this phone as a daily driver? Well, keeping in with the theme here, it was genuinely surprising. Scrolling through social media, playing games, watching videos, responding to emails and messages, all that good stuff, this phone was able to handle things no sweat. This phone has two gigabytes of RAM, but trust me, performance is totally acceptable, especially thanks to its Snapdragon 435 processor. Crammed inside the Z Max is a massive 4,080 milliamp hour battery, which is easily good enough for all day use. It sips the battery when the phone is not in use. It rivals and even surpasses a few other much more expensive flagships. Again, very surprised. You can also charge the phone up pretty fast thanks to the Quick Charge 2.0 tech included. Now closing things out with the cameras, there is that dual lens setup like I mentioned before and I was pretty impressed, especially considering this phone's price. In the camera app you'll find a handful of shooting modes, things like time lapse, panorama, multi-exposure, and a manual mode which is surprisingly in-depth and useful. You've also got a number of color filters you can use, and of course, there's the dual camera mode with three options for bokeh shots, portraits, and monocolor shots. Now, these aren't perfect, but what dual lens system is? And once again, I was genuinely surprised with some of the results I got, as well as the amount of detail that goes into getting the shot looking the way you want it to. And just as a regular auto mode camera, it's very solid. And this goes for the selfie camera too, which was a good amount better than I expected it to be. And overall, you can get some very usable shots with this phone. All in all, the Blade Z Max packs a very impressive punch, especially when considering how much you have to pay for it. It's got solid hardware, good performance, a big sharp screen, a huge battery, expandable storage, dual cameras, a fingerprint reader that's located in the right spot, and a headphone jack, all for under 150 bucks. The Blade Z Max is a phone that's impressive on both paper and in real world usage, and I definitely think it's worth it. Make sure you check it out in the description below. But anyway, that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That does it for me. I'll talk to you guys in the next video, and thank you so much for watching.